Brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. I have two stories for you today, both of which got lost in the news around Christmas, when few people are paying attention. And the first story is from Archbishop Roach, Francis's hireling whose job it is to smash sacred tradition. He decided to issue yet another clarification of Traditionis Custodis just before Christmas. No, not the response to the dubium, another one. And the second story is a related story of one group of small traditional priests deciding that they're going to be defiant in the face of Rome in all of this. Things are getting interesting, folks, and hopefully we'll see more resistance as the assaults on sacred tradition move forward in 2022. Let's begin with the wise words of the Great One, Paca Papa Francis, who was addressing the Roman Curia just before Christmas, and, as is often the case, provided advice that he himself refuses to take. Here in his Christmas address to the Roman Curia, he said, quote, Synodality is a style to which we must be converted. Above all those of us that are present and who serve the universal church, clericalism is a perverse temptation that daily spreads in our midst makes us keep thinking of a God who speaks only to some, while the others must only listen and obey. The humble give life, attract others, and push towards the unknown. The proud, on the other hand, simply repeat, grow rigid, and close themselves in that repetition, feeling certain about what they know, and fearful of anything new. Our living memory of the tradition of our roots is not worship or adoration of the past, but an interior movement whereby we constantly bring to our hearts everything that has preceded us, what marked our history. Remembering is not repeating, but treasuring, reviving, and with gratitude allowing the power of the Holy Spirit to set our hearts on fire like those of the first disciples. End quote. Wow, such wisdom, such mercy, such hypocrisy, and such antipathy towards the sacred traditions of the church. We must only listen and obey to him. <laughs> while well, he de- de- decries people who say we must only listen and obey. Truly remarkable. And it's a great segue into the Archbishop Roach clarification story. Rigidity is the great evil of our time, a hallmark of that evil clericalism that he was just speaking about, which Francis has made sound akin to that sort of, uh, we'll just leave it unnamed, German ideology from the 1930s, given how Francis talks about it. Yet if there has been any rigid inflexibility, it's coming from Francis and his hirelings not from the former Ecclesia Day Institutes like the FSSP. I hate to be the one to break the news to people, but the FSSP claimed that the dubia response from last week didn't apply to them. But Archbishop Roach in his recent statement made absolutely clear that it does in fact apply to them. The preconciliar form of the sacraments have been suppressed. That discussion focused on the Sacrament of Holy Orders and the ordination of priests in the old form. And it's worth noting here that many FSSP seminarians will not want to be ordained using the new form. That's an absolute uncontestable fact. But don't take my word for these sacraments having been suppressed. Let's see what Archbishop Roach says in the matter. In his interview with the National Catholic Register, he tells us this, quote, First of all, allow me by way of introduction to some of these questions to state an important point. The universal law regarding the antecedent liturgy prior to the reforms of the Second Vatican Council has been established by the Modu Proprio, Traditionis Custodis, of 16th July 2021 which supersedes all previous legislation. The Responsa Ad Dubia of the 4th of December 2021, published by the Congregation of Divine Worship and Discipline of the Sacraments, is an authoritative interpretation of how this law is to be applied. The Congregation for Consecrated Life and Societies of Apostolic Life has competency over the particular institutes you mention. This congregation has not made any statement about these institutes, However, the principle has been established that ordination in the Latin Church are conferred as directed by the rite approved by the Apostolic Constitution in 1968, New Rites of Sacred Ordination, issued by Pope St. Paul VI. End quote. What he's saying here is simple. The FSSP and similar groups have said that they are subject to a different set of laws than the rest of the Latin Rite of the Church. That's an interesting claim they make, and many of you have held onto it out of hope. I hate to be the one to dash your hopes, but Roach flat out says that jailers of tradition and the response to the dubia supersedes all previous ecclesiastical laws on this matter. He said that right there in that segment I read for you. Traditionis custodis applies to the FSSP, regardless of what they say. 
He goes on to say that the Pontificale Romanum, a liturgical book for saying the magnificent Pontifical High Mass, has been suppressed as well, which definitely impacts the FSSP. He also rejects categorically that the act was illicit, that Traditionus Custodis was an illicit act by Francis because, of course, he rejected that claim. But I want to focus on his statement on the strange issue of parish bulletins. By now you're aware that it is prohibited for a parish to advertise their mass times for the traditional Latin mass. The response to the dubia that didn't exist clearly said that. Arch Archbishop Roach's interviewer brings that up and says that the traditional Catholics are feeling discriminated against. Here's what the Archbishop has to say about that. Quote, it is clear in Traditionis Custodis that the celebration of the Mass using the Massale Romanum of 1962 is by way of concession and is therefore not the normal provision of the Church's liturgy as foreseen by the Second Vatican Council. The rites as approved by the saintly popes Paul VI and John Paul II are the unique expression of the Church's liturgy. As you yourself have noted in one of your own statements, most of the adherents to the Missal of 1962 have no problems with the Reformed Liturgy or the Second Vatican Council, but prefer that of 1962, for which the reason the celebration of Mass using this Missal is available to them. However, let me clarify one important matter. The Liturgy is never simply a matter of personal tastes or preferences. It is the Lex Orandi of the Church, which in faithfulness to the tradition received from apostolic times is determined by the Church and not by individual members. The Roman Missal of the saintly popes Paul VI and John Paul II is witness to an unaltered faith and uninterrupted and living tradition. End quote. Can't say that without laughing. Now, he invokes the now dead hermeneutic of continuity. According to Francis, that line of thinking is banned in the church now, so he needs to get on the same page as his boss. But it's worth noting here that nowhere in the living tradition of the faith, whatever the term living tradition is supposed to mean, nowhere can an example be found of ancient liturgies being suppressed in favor of something fabricated by confirmed enemies of the church in committee meetings and coffee shops. That's literally how the new mass was invented. And Paul VI was threatened with being denounced as a formal heretic by Cardinal Odo Viani over its contents. That happened. No mention of any of that, and no attempt to address the concerns in this regard from traditional Catholics. It's just more bludgeoning, like what's going on in the secular world. Roach tells us that the Pope has spoken, and that essentially we just need to shut up and fall in line. You know, that's nice, and as noted by virtually everyone at this point, it's not terribly pastoral of him, nor is it in keeping with their professed values of synodality and the rest of it. So be it. They just don't care. Francis has spoken, and now we must submit. That's not going to work, and we have no duty to submit to this, and I've gone over that numerous times recently, so I'll avoid repeating myself on that one. Instead, I have a story of a possible hope and certainly coming hardship for a group who is not going to submit to this. They are a priestly fraternity akin to the FSSP, and they are not going to take this lying down. So let's take a look at the other side of this. Barate Chaley published this letter from the head of the Saint Society of St. Vincent Ferrer, and I saw it first when they when it was sent out as an email. A listener sent it to me, so thanks to that listener who sent that to me. You've probably not heard of that particular priestly fraternity, but they're based out of France. They're not particularly well known outside of France and, few, and a few other places, but their letter is in response to questions they've received about the, what they will do in light of the demands of Francis and his merry band of heretic hirelings in regards to preserving the traditional form of the sacraments. His letter is relatively short, and I present it here to you in full. Note how different it is than the FSSP wishy-washy statements, both of them, that were issued recently. Now here's the letter that in, in question. Quote, Dear friends, In fervent expectation of the Savior, I feel the need to speak to you about a subject that concerns us all. I will do so with words that come from the heart of a priest who has celebrated the traditional Mass with deep joy for more than 44 years. The Modu Proprio Traditionis Custodis of July 16, 2021, and the Responsa Ad Dubia of the Congregation for Divine Worship of December 18, 2021, raises a question for us. Should the Institutes of Ecclesia Dei adopt, as they are invited to do, the celebration of the Mass and the Sacraments according to the Missal and Rituals of Paul VI? In other words, should these Institutes begin a process of abandoning the liturgical books that predate the 1969 Reform? As the founder of one of these institutes, I answer without hesitation. The traditional liturgy is our very being. To ask us to abandon it is to recommend that we kill what has shaped our spiritual being for decades. The traditional Latin liturgy is part of the immemorial wealth of the Church, which cannot disappear because it is part of its unavailable patrimony. 
to want to eliminate it from visible horizon of the Catholic Church, as Jean Maderan used to say, is an impossible endeavor because it is contradictory to the essence of tradition. Finally, for those of us who have made vows in institutes whose constitutions are steeped in traditional liturgy, it is to invite us to reject the form in which God wants us to be holy, as St. Elizabeth of the Trinity said of her rule. By remaining faithful to our vows, we are in full obedience to the Church. The Apostolic Constitution Pastor Bonus of June 28, 1988, states in Article 107, The congregation, for its part, takes care that institutes of consecrated life and societies of apostolic life grow and flourish according to the spirit of their founders and healthy traditions, faithfully follow their proper purpose, and truly benefit the salvific mission of the Church. Now, what is the spirit of our founders, and what are our proper purposes? Our spirituality, apostolate, liturgy, and discipline are guided by fidelity to the apostolic see, intimately united with attachment to the Latin tradition. This includes the ability to celebrate according to the liturgical books in use in 1962. To abandon this aspect of our religious life in the crucial area of the liturgy would be for us contrary to obedience and to the spirit of the Church. There is another reason why abandoning it is impossible. The honor of the Holy See. The Holy See has assured priests and faithful who are respectful of hierarchical authority, but for whom the liturgical reform constitutes a real difficulty, that all measures will be taken to guarantee their identity in the full communion of the Catholic Church. It has written these provisions into the decrees of erection of our institutes and has confirmed our constitutions. These solemn texts clearly express our attachment to the traditional pedagogies of the faith, especially in liturgical matters. According to the principle of Pacta Sunt Servanda, the supreme authority of the Church cannot go back on its word. However, it is impossible for members of our institutes to abandon our liturgical customs. The religious men and women and priests who belong to them have taken vows, or made a commitments according to the specifications of the decrees of erection and the constitutions which bind them to the liturgical forms of the earlier Latin tradition. In this way, trusting in the word of the Supreme Pontiff, they have given their lives to Christ to serve the Church. According to the natural law and the classical theology of obedience, anything contrary to this essential specification cannot therefore bind them. Finally, such a process of liturgical mutation would be gravely damaging for a significant number of the faithful. Already they do not understand the restrictions placed on the celebration of the traditional Mass. Their distress at the loss of a liturgy that nourishes their interior life would be immense. And how could they stand by and watch hundreds of priests, religious men and women, and seminarians, who with clear consciences and based on the word of previous pontiffs, have remained faithful to the Catholic hierarchy for 33 years, sometimes at a great sacrifice, being treated in this way. Fidelity to the traditional liturgy is for us a duty and a joyful way to contribute to the Church's mission of salvation. May the child of the manger and his immaculate mother bless you, my dear friends, and keep you in hope. Signed, Brother Luis Marie, the Superior General of this order. And that's the end of the letter. Again, note how different that is compared to the FSSP letters. They could have made the exact same argument that he's making here, but they didn't. The first of the FSSP letters was honestly pretty weak, and it was looked that way to most observers, and the second of which denied reality when they claimed that the sacramental restrictions in the published in the response to the dubia did not affect them when Archbishop Roach clearly made that the case here. He plainly said that it did affect them, in groups like them. Will the FSSP submit? Probably they will, as an organization. Individual priests may be a different story, especially when we factor in bishops, who think that this whole thing is an unjust mess and have quietly reassured their priests in this situation that they have nothing to worry about. Whether that remains to be the case is anyone's guess, but for now it's all the FSSP and similar groups have going for them, since they've refrained from taking the position of the Society of St. Vincent Ferrer. What did you think of all this? Are the priests of St. Vincent Ferrer in the right here? Is it at least kind of incredible that Archbishop Roche decided to do this all just before Christmas? Let me know in the comments what you think about all this and what you think is coming next. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Merry Christmas. And Ave Maria.